from WAIF 88.3, Tom Winkler. Thank you, John. What an honor it is to be here tonight for the Fort Thomas and the Northern Kentucky Music Legends introductions. We got four fabulous groups tonight that are going to be inducted. And then they've got a concert for you to follow this. So we're going to start right off with the very first group that's going to get their awards this evening. Would the Brotherhood Singers please come up? One more time, ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause. Well deserved, gentlemen. Anybody want to say anything? Come on up. Mike's yours. It's good. Yeah. It's by his grace that uh, we were able to to endure for 30 years, and we'd like to take the, a moment to recognize two of our original members that have passed away, Brother Robert Bobby Mullins and Shaka Zulu Tayemba. Thank you. Well, we'll give you your award, but I'm going to talk about you anyway. <laughs> Do you? All right. Good works for me. All right. The group was a combination of great players from Northern Kentucky that led them from the area of New York City and a recording contract with Columbia Records, the largest recording company in the world at the time. During the late 60s, they were one of the hottest bands in the area, playing five nights a week in the places like the Whiskey A Go Go, LA, California, on the Sunset Strip, right? Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> absent that night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, how many of you know Johnny Rivers? Anybody know the name Johnny Rivers? Yeah, well, he played out there for years at the Whiskey A Go Go in the 1960s. Uh, this is definitely an honor. A friend of mine told me, uh, John, there's guitar players all over the world that never get any kind of recognition. And uh, you're getting some recognition from your hometown people, from friends and uh, people that you've known for years. And I... Uh, I accept it with gratitude, and I, I appreciate it. And I also would like to um, thank the rest of the band. None of them's here, but uh, without those guys, uh, there wouldn't have been a bad seed. So they, uh, they were extraordinary players, uh, and uh, the ones that are left still are. And I would also... Uh, give uh, thanks to God because uh, God gives us all uh, talents. Yes. Uh, all you uh, musicians out there that are not playing right now, I guarantee you God wants to hear his talent. He wants to hear it. Yes. So get out there and make some noise. huh? <laughs> Thank you very much. The one it goes a little bit like this. In 1963, the Wanted were formed and they were the hardest working band in the tri-state area. The Roundup Club in Erlanger was their unofficial home four nights a week and they would play as many as three different clubs in one night. What? Four hours. <laughs> four, four hours a day, that's, that's four to twelve hours of playing. Wow. You guys are good. Moving from club to club, and of course, uh, during the band breaks is how they did it. They went from one club to another. On the fifth night, they would play their own gig in the places around the area. Clubs like Guys and Dolls, right down on 27. The Inner Circle, up in Clifton, I remember it well. Groups like Orange Colored Sky, James Brown, Wayne Cochran, and the CC Riders came in up there. That was a great club. It's Bogarts today. Nothing like it was back in the heyday. And the Pickle Barrel, along with many colleges and high schools. Included in the lineup was Jim Young on bass, 
John Young on lead guitar and two-time Hall of Fame inductee Miles Hodges on the drums. I only read what's here. On the seventh day we rested. That's right. Yeah, they, they told me that in broadcast school. Later that later that year, Dave. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce this. Nitsky, very good, thank you. Yeah. Replaced John on lead guitar and Mike Gherkin was added on bass. The nucleus of the Wanted was formed and remained in place for over a decade. The band at times featured two drummers at once. Only a few bands have ever done that. Rare Earth was one of them. Bill Marksberry joined the band in late 1963 and they were set as a club and dance band. Ladies and gentlemen, inductees for 2017, The Wanted. I'd um, like to say a little bit about one of our members who isn't here tonight. Um, if you knew the band, you knew Bill Marksberry. Uh, Bill was the heart and soul of The Wanted. Um, we called him the Dancing Bear, the Great Skeeb, the Round Mound of Sound, and he was all of that. Uh, he was a heck of an entertainer. We're, we miss him a lot. But I know he's up there looking at us now and saying, good job, guys. So, again, thank you all very much. Hope you enjoyed everything. You thought so. <laughs> okay. The members are Cliff Adams, John Damasio, Denny Davis, and uh, I'll keep trying. And uh, Larry Quill, that's the member of the band. The British invasion was happening then, and the group made the most of it, playing that style of music. After their first record release, "You Don't Want Me, Vera," they became they began playing on uh, TV stations in the Cincinnati and Columbus area, and filling venues all along the way. Their appearances were hosted by WAI, uh, WSAI, the hottest rock and roll station in the area at the time, sitting atop Price Hill up there next to where Prima Vista is today and all the great rest. In 1969, at the peak of their popularity, they split up. <laughs> they did get back together for a special event in 2000 with other popular bands from that era. The Wanted, the Band Seeds, and the, was that the Demons? Demons? Denims, okay, blue jeans. For an even label flashback 2000, it was a tremendous success and the band continued to play out for a short time after that. They still have a loyal following years after they quit playing. 2017 inductees, ladies and gentlemen, the Dingoes.